Hey there, everyone. Brian Clark here for Seven Figures Small. And this week, we've got kind of a special episode for you. This is a case study that we did for our paid members in Future Freedom. And it's kind of a fascinating uh, exploration of the emerging new business models that uh, come with blockchain, with crypto, and with NFTs. And it's an exploration of a community built around crypto dads, uh, NFTs. Jared Morris did an interview with the founders, and I think you're really going to enjoy it. Uh, If you would like to get started over at Future Freedom for free, head over to futurefreedom.com. There's a free course that you can uh, take to understand where we're coming from with exploring opportunity in the creator economy and Web 3.0. Enjoy. I am excited to be joined today by a couple of guys who are currently on a rocket ship of attention and interest in the NFT space, and with good reason. They are the founders of the recently minted Crypto Dads NFT project, which sold out in literally minutes and has only grown in value since. And while some NFT founders like to stay in the shadows and only go by pseudonyms, uh, these two are out in front promoting their project and building confidence that they can actually deliver on their ambitious roadmap. And so with that said, Josh and Anthony... Welcome to the show. I really appreciate you guys joining me today. Yeah, thanks for having us, man. We appreciate it. We're, we're excited to chat it up. <laughs> yeah, thanks so much. So, so to start, I mean, can you just share, like, what have the past few months been for you guys? Because I know listening to some other interviews, I don't think you quite expected it to be like this. You know, So yeah. what has it been like, and how has that kind of contrasted with what your initial expectations were like? Yeah, um, I mean, from my perspective... Um, it kind of started off as like a me and Anthony catch kind of catching up thing. Uh, he knew I was in cryptocurrency. Obviously, I knew that he's been doing branding successfully. Um, but before that, we were friends, you know, so we kind of were just like, hey, let's catch up and like talk about stuff. Um, and when we when we caught up, he, you know, he had the idea already, but he was like kind of skeptical about it because he didn't know necessarily um, the best route or, you know, didn't have people around him that also were into NFTs. Um, and I was just like, like, dude, let's just do it. You know, <laughs> like, why not? Um, I know we're both like fully capable people. So yeah, it, it you know, we, for, to go from that to where we're at now with all these major brands reaching out and all these interviews, it's, it's been extremely wild. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, for sure. So yeah, we've basically just been working alongside our artists and devs over the past few months and, um, just, you know, doing what it takes to build a project, but we didn't really have the structure and everything already laid out for, you know, it to be this big, um, just because we were kind of doing it for fun in the beginning. And then um, once it started blowing up, we really had to figure stuff out fast and kind of start adapting, um, bringing more people on and re- really kind of solidifying where we want to go with the project. So that's kind of what you're seeing now. <laughs> so so before I get too far into this, you know, because, you know, maybe some of the people who, who are listening to this aren't familiar yet with the project. And I yeah. should, you know, I should offer a disclaimer. I'm a crypto dad's owner. In fact, I own multiple crypto dads. Um, and it was kind of one of those things like after digging into NFTs, you know, I'd heard about them and I was really, I was desperately trying to find a project that interested me and that I connected with. Like I, I couldn't really get into it or just like buying it speculatively. Like I really wanted to find a project that I like. I'm, I'm a community builder by heart. And so I wanted to get into a community that I really kind of believed in. And I mean, when I found yours, it was like instantaneous. It was like at first sight, I'm like, yes, this is my spot. I'm into crypto now. I'm a dad. These are my people, <laughs> you know? And so, but I, but I do want everybody listening to know that up front, you know, that I am invested in this project succeeding. Um, but the purpose of this discussion is not meant to just be a shill session for crypto dads, right? Our, my main interest in having you guys on is really to dig into kind of the business and the community model that you've executed on over the past few months, because it's been really, really impressive. And, you know, minting the next top 10 NFT probably isn't in the cards for a lot of the folks listening, but I think there's a lot to learn about the growing power and utility of NFTs, especially when it comes to community commerce business models, which is something that we, you know, really work on uh, with our folks. So before we get into that, can you give a quick description of Crypto Dads from your perspective? And especially, 
you know, when someone who isn't a crypto native asks you guys, like, what is crypto dads? How do you explain it to those people? Yeah. So, I mean, specifically, like I get asked that question all the time um, by my own dad, actually, because he's not like super savvy on NFT. So I had to explain it to him. And the the way I explain crypto dad specifically um, is it's literally a community and it's an, it's an exclusive community. So when you own one of these dads, you're like a part of something bigger. You now have, you know, you're now in with a lot of other people who share a similar interest with you. And um, you you also are, you know, you're basically holding a token that allows you to um, attend events with these people, uh, have special access to merchandise. It, it's, it's literally just a very exclusive membership in a way. Yeah. It's, it's basically like a, a instantly verifiable membership too, right? Like you can't like, uh, make a replica like ticket to get into an event because there's one member or one owner on the blockchain, right. That everyone can see. Um, so that's like the overall point of NFTs in general. Um, but obviously, you know, ours is a lot more than just being like a membership pass, but overall, it's all about the community. You know, we're going to have uh, the crypto moms, crypto tots in the future. We're going to have the lawnmower game. So, you know, we could go into detail about all sorts of utility for why you'd want to actually own a crypto dad. Um, but as far as NFTs in general, it's all about verifiable ownership yeah. on chain. So. Which seems to me like the thing that a lot of people miss. Right. right. They see the headlines, you know, like Board Ape Yacht Club and how much these things are selling for. They mm -hmm. see on Twitter all these these weird avatars that are that are popping up, <laughs> some of which almost look to be like you know, flagrantly poorly designed. Right. Like mm -hmm. it's like, wait a minute, why are people spending so much for this? And I think you hit on it. It's exclusive community. It's access to something that is special to a certain group of people that you can't get otherwise. And there is a little mm -hmm. element of social capital to it as well. And mm -hmm. that was the thing that finally clicked for me when I joined yours. Because for so long, like I said, I hadn't really been able to relate to a project. Yeah. And that's what I think is has been really special about yours. And I'd love to get your perspective on it, is how much people are connecting with it. Because for a lot of us who are in there, it mm -hmm. really, it hits on like two pieces of our identity that are really important. You know, like this kind of growing obsession a lot of folks have with crypto because they're into it. They're down the rabbit hole. They're just learning about it. And then, of course, for any of us who are dads, that's, you know, like one of the most important things. And that's not everybody who's in there. There's speculators and there's other people in there like any of these other projects. But it really feels like a lot of the people, maybe a majority of the people, that does really describe, which makes your project a little different, I think. For yeah, sure. yeah. And I, I completely agree with that. And kind of the way I feel about it, um, just hanging out in the Discord with everybody, it's like going to a LAN party in high school, like a Halo party, and everybody brings their consoles and TVs and stuff. Like you're all collectively in the same room together and just like it, it, super interested in the same stuff. And you're almost living the same lifestyle as well. So th that's basically it's it's like a LAN party on a m like a much larger scale. <laughs> that, that's yeah. that's what it feels like to me personally. Yeah. Um I've I've met a lot of friends like in the Discord and stuff and a lot of us have, you know, so much in common that it's I, I don't know, it's just nuts, man. <laughs> like Yeah, it really is. So yeah. So let's go back to the beginning of this and I want to dig a little mm -hmm. bit into the business model of it and yeah. some of the community building aspects of it. Um so you guys said you you kind of came together Anthony, you had the idea. How did the idea for it come about? What was the genesis of the idea? Yeah, so it was kind of like um it's kind of a parody, kind of a joke in the beginning. Um, basically, I, I'm always scrolling through Twitter and like seeing, um, I, I follow mostly crypto people. And a lot of these people are dads. Um, they have it in their bio, father, whatever. And I, I kept, I would see like certain ones like buying into like crazy coins, like that are obviously just pump and dumps. And they would like try to make a quick flip off of them, but then they would like lose all their money. Or like, then, you, then you'd have, you know, the dads on crypto who actually like, hit it perfect and they ended up making a ton you know so i thought it would be funny to like create a character that revolved around these people on twitter who were constantly just like jumping into what people call shit coins um and, and just going for it and a lot of the, some you know some of these people are educated on the space and then some just didn't really know what they were doing um so it was just kind of fun to watch all of that <laughs> yeah and yeah i thought it would be funny to actually bring a character you know to life that looks like those people 
so when did it move beyond that? You know, you and Josh get yeah. together, you start developing this. When does it move beyond kind of a joke, kind of funny thing to like, holy crap, man, we might really have something here. First day of Discord. I'm sure Josh yeah, can touch I mean, on that. <laughs> yeah, we basically, we, we were talking one day, you know, after planning it for a while, making the artwork, you know, still in the process of making the artwork, obviously not done with it at this point. And we're like, you know, we should probably get started with the Twitter and Discord. Like, I'll reach out to a few people to, you know, see what they think about our project, you know, get some people in there, some eyes. And yeah, pretty much from day one, it started blowing up. So, yeah, <laughs> we didn't really know what to expect. We thought we were we opened it too early even. <laughs> um, and, you know, we we had massive support from the beginning. It was honestly pretty crazy to us. Um, just like the amount people were supporting a brand new project. You know, it's not very common that um, people join a new project and they're already so positive, you know, but there's a lot of like doubt. And, you know, there's you know what's called FUD, which is fear, uncertainty, doubt. Um, mm -hmm. and that's very common in crypto because it's a really volatile place. There's a lot of emotions involved and there's money, uh, money on the table. So yeah, it, it was really crazy from the beginning, honestly. Yeah. Uh, and I think once we, once we started seeing people like take it seriously, like pe people who actually identified with the project, um, that's when we really were like, okay, we need to start like planning this further, you know, like long-term. So I started pulling, pulling a bunch of you know, my e-commerce connections. He started pulling a bunch of people that he knew in the crypto space to the project. And we ba basically just started brainstorming, uh, listening to what the community was saying in Discord. Uh, people wanted energy drinks because some people don't drink beer. So we went and found a supplier for energy drinks the same day. And just, just really bringing a lot of this stuff to life for people um, because we had the resources to do so. And yeah, I, I think it's, you know, a good use of our energy <laughs> and it will definitely help the project long-term. We both also had like previous um, thing, you know, projects we were working on that we pretty much dropped everything to work on this full time. So yeah, this is yeah. all we we don't. A lot of people, you know, will be advisors on like this project, that project, even while they're running their own project, you know, and like no fault to them. Um, but you know, we're very, very focused on uh, producing for this project and creating a future for it. So. Well, you know, and this is the part that fascinates me, you know, because I've built a lot of online communities and we teach the folks that are that are kind of in our orbit how to build online communities. And a lot of times it is a slow, patient process of building a newsletter and building an audience and building a connection with those people and, you know, selling a, pro uh, a product that starts to get, you know, kind of that commerce connection going. And then you turn it into an online community. And now you're seeing, you know, what what I'm calling just spontaneous community, like what you guys are doing, where it's like, you've got the idea, you open it up and oh my God, here come the floodgates, you know, and now you're almost responding more to it where it's like, whoa, this community has, is here. And now what do we do with it? When people came over, you know, I'm curious because to me, I found you guys, I think like four or five days before the mint. So I was too late to actually qualify for the presale, which was really disappointing to me, <laughs> but that's okay. I was still able to get in and, and get mine. It was just kind of a timing thing. Yeah. But you know, what really spoke to me was seeing the roadmap and what you guys had laid out and how, okay, if I'm holding a crypto dad now, I can mint to crypto mom down the road. And then there's this game coming. Like there was a real vision that had been painted, which is really important for a project like this. Yep. When that initial community floodgate happened, had you painted that roadmap yet? Or was even the roadmap a response to that? Yeah, so we we already had the roadmap planned out and everything. Um, so so all of that was solidified. But basically, what we did was we started seeing people's recommendations uh, within the community of stuff that we honestly ha hadn't thought about yet. Um, so we were, we were like, okay, well, we can do a lot of these things that people would you know want to see. So we started kind of adding on to the roadmap. Um, but yeah, we already had you know the gaming aspect. Uh, kind of solidified. We we weren't sure if it was going to be lawnmower racing, but we we were planning the entire project around utility and the metaverse. And uh, I'm sure Josh has some stuff to say about that too. Um, the roadmap was pretty solidified. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, like you said, it, we had a we had a really long list of things we wanted to complete in the roadmap. We have even like additional things um, that we have that are planned um, that we just don't want to, you know, we don't want to put out every single step. A lot of yeah. things are um, somewhat, you know, not hundred percent certain yet. Um, but yeah, we, we, we have a whole community suggestions channel, which is constantly, you know, is it's awesome that people have so many suggestions because it means people care, you know? Um, but, you know, 
every every few minutes someone will post a suggestion so. i'm sure that can and get overwhelming <laughs> yeah, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> but you know it's awesome too we, we love to see people's suggestions and uh we're constantly interpreting them to try to see if you know there are things we can actually make a reality um like you said the lawnmower racing thing not only was that um pretty community driven it was also like you know we were reached out to by a pretty fairly a fairly well-known blockchain company um so it all kind of just like worked out perfectly without us even putting it out there you know it was like the community mm -hmm. wanted it this company also wanted to create it for us so it, it we're i guess we're just in the right place at the wrong uh at the right time for a lot of things yeah with with the right project too i mean right sure. yeah you know, at, at a time when I'm sure a lot of crypto dads are having FOMO at, you know, not being able to get into the Board Ape Yacht Club or one of these other ones, it's like now this comes along behind it where it's like, whoa, this is still in the early stage where I can get in and get involved. So, I mean, timing is definitely important on, as far as that goes. Yeah, I, I agree. And that's kind of, you know, what we wanted to do with crypto dads from the beginning is kind of create a community that opened up a lot of opportunity for all, all kinds of, you know, people. Cause like me in the beginning, like I couldn't afford a board ape anymore. You know what I mean? And there's no way I was getting my hands on one. So, um, this was kind of that for me in a way too, just kind of creating our own. You know, you know, it's funny. I've had conversations with, with Brian, uh, you know, my, my partner mm -hmm. and, you know, one of the things that, you know, that we started to see, you know, from a, lo a lot of the, you know, kind of the crypto native folks and, you know, the Cooper Turleys of the world and all these guys who are, I mean, I follow them and learn a ton from them, mm -hmm. you know, but you read the tweets and it's like, okay, NFTs are over. We're moving on to DAOs now. You know, it's like the, the PFP NFTs, this is done. Yep. And, you know, we're talking, it's like, yeah, maybe like a massive project like CryptoPunks or Board Ape Yacht Club, you, you may not get another one of those. But NFTs are just now starting to infiltrate the you know the masses, and for mm -hmm. other ideas and micro communities, you know, like this, it still seems like there's just an ocean of potential still to go. Yeah. You know, which I, which I think you guys are showing, um, and that's why I think this is really interesting as a business model. You know, again, you know, the whole the the, the template of you know mint ten thousand and kind of try to go wide with it. Mm -hmm. You know, I can see how that may get diminishing returns, but on a, on a micro community using something like this, you know, to, to grow it and build that community around it. I just think there's massive potential still to go. And you guys are really charting a course. I think that people could follow to be successful yeah. with it. Yeah. Uh, also, I think something that's important is that it's also, it's really not even just the micro communities, right? Like there are massive corporations out here that won't even consider looking at nfts and that's like a billion dollars that they're yeah. leaving on the table you know minimum for some of these people and um it's just like it all it just makes too much sense for it to not happen and i just know it will happen but it's just kind of crazy how long it takes these people to move on to new industries you know yeah. um, and that's I, that makes me happy i mean i'll i'm more than happy to be the one here but um, I mean, you know, there's already so many games like microtransactions, for example, like, let's say you can own a skin like on Steam, you know, this, this might get a little technical for you know, <laughs> random people that don't game, but this is just what I think of. So if you're playing a game like Counter-Strike, you can own skins, which mm -hmm. you can buy for real money. Um, let's say you were to own a skin that was, you know, also an NFT. So you were the actual owner of that skin. It wasn't just like you own a skin on that game, right? Mm -hmm. so you could transfer that skin to someone you could sell it to someone whatever and it wouldn't be like just on that marketplace or just on that game that you would be the owner of it um yeah and so it would just open up way more possibilities than just like the baseline of having a skin in the game you know putting a hundred dollars on it to have some skins and then like eventually lose your account or something like that and you know that's just how things go right now in the gaming industry and that's one that is just going to explode with nfts for example yeah yep yeah. And I think, um, I mean, like the art of NFTs and everything is kind of just the front facing thing, but that's yeah. not even close to the big picture. You know, it, that's just basically you're, you're getting your foot in the door. Yeah. Um, everything that comes after that, that you can build off of is actually what, in my opinion, you know, the NFT space is all about. Um, so like, you know, for us with, we, we've had some Netflix writers reach out to us about a potential, like, show you know whether that's on youtube or you know whether that's on netflix and just trying to keep the community involved as much as possible and kind of give people maybe even another source of income um is something that we're striving towards because i, I think covid showed a lot of us that you know it's very easy to be out of work within a second 
um, anything can happen. But whenever you have things that are virtual or virtual or on the internet, such as a YouTube show and say we lease people's characters off of them and they get royalties for every episode that their character shows up in like that, that's a way that people can also, you know, make income from being involved in communities like this. Um, and I, I think we're going to see that a lot more over the next like couple of years with NFTs. Yes. The possibility for that is just incredible. I mean, like when I explained that to my wife, she started mm -hmm. to get it. <laughs> like that, yeah, that sure. part of it, that, that was something that, that she really started to get. So, you know, one of the things that really impressed me when I got involved in your guys' project, and again, having not been involved in a lot of other ones, but seeing what some of the more experienced people were saying mm -hmm. was commenting on how responsive you guys were in the community and how involved you were, you know, and the fact that you were out there with your real faces, your real names, like being involved with this. Why did you decide to do it that way? Was that a lesson that you learned from watching other other projects? Is that just naturally how you are? Like, tell me about that because uh, I think it's a big a big part of your guys' success. Yeah, um, I mean, I'll start for one. Like, I think the easiest answer is that we both have like extreme anxiety, so we don't like <laughs> to let things go out of control without being able to, you know, control the situation. Um, which, you know, I think we're both pretty effective at. You, you know, we're never trying to do anyone wrong. So there's nothing at the end of the day that can't be resolved. If there's a problem with someone is how we feel, you know, we're not, scam we're not trying to scam anyone, you know, there's no reason someone w should have some sort of massive problem. Um, but <laughs> that here, I'll let Anthony go and I'll continue my thoughts in a second. Yeah. So the, I mean, I'm from the e-commerce space, right? So it, it can be a very tricky space to navigate. And I mean, there. There's a lot of FUD revolving around it from people just selling courses and then they disappear off the face of the earth. And mm -hmm. I, you know, I kind of saw the same characteristics being carried over to the crypto space um, with people launching certain projects. 99% uh, of them are great. I'm a huge supporter of most NFT projects, but I also have, I, I don't know, I always thought it was weird just like not showing your face or not like attaching your identity to the project if you're really, really passionate about it. Um, and this is something, you know, crypto dads is something that I'm extremely passionate about, especially men's mental health. Um, and I think kind of, I, I, I don't know, like building connections with people is very important to me and you can't do that without showing your face, um, at the end of the day. So that that's really long story short, that's my main reason for, you know, fully doxing myself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I, I don't even know if my thing is, uh, I was all about doc. I had no problem doxing myself. I used to be a completely anonymous person actually before this. Um, but you know, I've also seen plenty of docs people that are just like openly scammers. Um, so, you know, that's not the ultimate decision that people should make. Um, but I mean, I, I would say that we definitely are a lot more responsive than any other, you know, I can't say that for certain, but we try our best to be as responsive as possible because it makes a huge difference, right? Like that one person that we're responding to, that's going to mean a lot to them. Um, and also the, all the people that are observing that conversation, they're also going to be like, oh, like this is different, you know, and we have those interactions every single day. Um, yeah. And it just adds up, you know, it, it, it can never hurt taking a couple minutes out of my day, talking to our community, the people that literally make this project. Uh, that's the least I could do is how I see it. So, yeah. yeah. And, and obviously like trust is a big thing in the space, right? Especially if we, we want to move into mass adoption, uh, there has to be some form of trust there. So I, I think showing your face and just being fully transparent with the community and just everybody involved is the best way to go. I, I think you move a lot further that way. And um, like I said, we're huge supporters of, you know, other NFT projects. So, you know, we we 100 percent stand behind mass adoption and we'll do whatever it takes to push that. So, yeah, yep. I want to take a little bit into the business model of mm -hmm. a project like this to understand it. Yeah. Um, it you know, and, and it's interesting for us because we're just coming on the heels of launching our own creator coin on the rally network, uh, the move coin, mm -hmm. which has gone really, really well. But, uh, you know, a big part of that was educating our audience on what that meant and what the benefits were to them and to us. You know, why? Why would we do this? And it was actually a lot easier to explain the benefits of why someone, you know, one of our audience members should hold the coin than it even was for why this benefits us. And so, you know, I'm, I'm curious. I think it's, it's similar here, you know. It's pretty easy, I think, once you actually get into it to explain, okay, well, this is how you can benefit from holding a crypto dad. You get access to all this stuff. The price could appreciate, you know, they're building the future of the metaverse with it, yada, yada, all this stuff. But from your guys' perspective, 
you know, what, what are the benefits to you? What is the business model for you guys that allows you to then work on this full time? Can you kind of outline that just so, cause I'd love to understand a little bit more about that too. I'll let, I'll let Anthony handle or talk about the actual business side, but like the way I view this and the way I've viewed anything in my life, um, I've always been a pretty abstract person. You know, I don't, I've never really understood having a, a job, um, like a, a nine to five job, you know, not that I have anything against it. Um, but, That's right. Our know, community is called unemployable. So right, we're, right, we're, yeah. we're right I mean, there we're with in you. The right place. Okay, awesome. <laughs> yes. I'm in the wrong place. No, um, <laughs> you know, the amount of attention and opportunity that we've already got from this is worth more money than I could ever imagine. Right. Hmm. Um, even if we didn't have or make any money from this project, the opportunities that we'd have to make money or be involved in potential to make money is endless from this. Um, so that's really, that's also why we care so much about making this a respectful project yeah. and why we care so much because it, this, we're putting, you know, our identities on the line, we're putting our names on the line and like, we want this to be like ours, you know, we, we don't want to be ashamed of the thing that we're creating. So that's why we're, we're doing everything in our power to do what we can. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, coming as far as like the whole business structure of this all, for me, like coming from the e-com space, like you have to be making, you know, profit to stay in business. Yeah. Um, well, it's the same thing here. Like, obviously we have to structure this in a way that it's going to keep us afloat. Uh, we don't need a whole lot. We're pretty minimal guys, but we also <laughs> have a lot of business expenses that comes along with this as far as marketing, um, getting influencers involved, uh, the beer run, like that costs money, you know, all these partnerships. Yeah. Um, and, and I, I think having that structure, you know, built out a year from now or two years from now to where we can constantly build off of that, um, is kind of where we're headed. So the, the one thing that we also, especially in this space that we have to keep in mind though, with focusing a lot on the profits to keep things running is, well, how do, how do we also get back to the community at the same time? Cause <laughs> you can't just keep saying, oh, well, you own a crypto dad. That's it. Um, right. so, you know what can we do or how much percentage of say the beer sales or the merch sales can we give back to our crypto dad holders or put it into the community wallet um so literally everything we do around a business aspect and uh profit aspect we we basically will always be tying in ways to make sure that the community also gets a percentage of all of that because they're putting in a lot of work as well like the like most of these people are in the discord almost 24 hours a day just hanging out and talking and that keeps the business running too um, yeah. their time is an expense. So we, we look at that and yeah, we just always trying to always try to brainstorm ways to make sure that they're also getting, you know, a piece of the pie. So, and the way that, that you're doing that, right. Is you're basically setting up a separate wallet that is a yeah. community wallet yep. and it's, you know, anybody can go on ether scan and see the deposits and, and, and withdrawals from that. And so you're putting a percentage of, you know, stuff that comes back from those projects into that wallet. To yeah. then be 100% of the, yep, 100 of the profit margin from the all the merch goes to the community wallet, for example. Um, and then we're you know we obviously haven't worked out the actual logistics of the beer and et cetera, and, but yeah. a percentage, a specified percentage of those sales will also go to the community wallet. And then, so when you when you ran when you did the initial mint, right? So it costs I think 0. 0.07 to mint one of these. Mm -hmm. So when that money is paid, then that goes. To you, or that goes to the owners of the project, right? Is that how right, that works? Yeah. So yeah. Okay. it's us, it's our dev, and then our artist. Okay. Um, so our dev, <laughs> it was it was quite quite a week of code of probably stress for I our bet. dev. <laughs> some last minute insane struggles, not for us, but you know there was this. I don't know if you know anything about the sevens. Um, yeah. Oh yes. You know, looking tracking project, that one. Just, you know, unfortunately, Love that like project, a, by the way, a lot of attack going on, you know, yeah, uh, nothing had nothing to do with them, but it was something that our community was like extremely um, worried about. So that was like two days before the launch, right? The seven uh, thing that happened. I think that was actually the day of our launch. Yeah, the day it, of? Was, Jeez. it was like that an happened, hour before the launch. An and hour we had before, to, yeah. yeah. So we had to oh, go ahead, okay, yeah. so just so people listening know, I mean, basically... Yeah what happened with that? Like one person minted like thousands of them or something Yeah, it, yep, because of exactly. they exploited some issue with open seas code or something like that. Um, yeah, it's not necessarily an issue. So there's basically, um, you can rent nodes basically. And when you have a node, you're basically the first one to enter a transaction on a block. And basically there's, uh, I'm not going to 
name the place that these people do it because you know who knows but mm -hmm. there's there's a platform where you can basically stake a certain amount of a coin to get access to a very powerful node oh. and these people are staking hundreds of thousands of dollars worth to basically front run thousands of transactions and they're basically just spamming these transactions to get past like the mm -hmm. you know max uh, transaction limits etc uh, but yeah, so basically, you know, one person minting 10% of the supply of anything is probably not like the best, especially yeah. in, like a, a public sale. So mm -hmm. it, it was it was a little bit rough, I'm sure, for them. But that was something that we definitely wanted to avoid. So uh, the, all that being said is we we definitely made sure our dev was taken care of money wise um, as well yeah. as our artists. So that was a big a lot of the big expenses. You know, we can we came out of pocket a quite amount of money, you know. Uh, from the beginning, you know, there's yeah. initial costs for the contract deployment. Um, you know, I'm sure Anthony can go into more detail, but there's a lot, there were a lot of expenses that we had to repay, but yeah. Ultimately. Yeah. So for like anybody listening, who's thinking about starting an NFT project, uh, that's one thing to keep in mind. That was a very last minute expense that we were not expecting. Um, if you're going to do a pre-sale mm. and you have 2000 people on that pre-sale list, it is extremely expensive to deploy all 2000 of those addresses to the smart contract. Really? So it ended up being tens of thousands of dollars just to get the contract up on. Is that because of gas fees? Mm -hmm. is, that, is, that what the, is that what the price so is basically, there? Basically each, you know, obviously we're writing more than one address per time we write the script, but yeah. Each address has to be written into the blockchain or into the contract. Um, so basically it runs it each time as like a gas transaction. Gotcha. So it ended up being, yeah, multiple tens of thousands of dollars. And that <laughs> wow. was, like you said, this was something that we kind of figured out like a couple of days before we were actually deploying the contract. So yeah. Yeah. That, gotcha. that was a risk that we had to take because I mean, I mean we, we didn't no know money at this point also, you know. So yeah. 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 So, you know, I know one of the things and, and thanks for the insight on that, because that's, you know, I think yeah. that, that's one of those things that, you know, I'm not sure a lot of people, you know, kind of know about. Mm -hmm. One of the things on your roadmap that I've been really interested about is the CDAD coin. And I know, you know, you, I think on the roadmap, it talks about how in the lawnmower game, it'll be kind of a play to earn game where you can earn that coin. Mm -hmm. I'm curious how much you've thought through and, and how much you're even able to share at this point about how the the coin will be used kind of inside the overall kind of crypto dads you know universe yeah, yeah. Um, oh go ahead josh i'll just say real quick uh that we don't want to so one thing that we're really highly considering and we're just ma we're just making sure that's very thought out um because obviously we don't want to get into the you know sh the shitcoin territory yeah um where it's just like a you know we people that are buying it are just hoping that it like goes 100x and if it doesn't then like you know they don't care about it or you know it, it just defeats the purpose of our project we're trying that wasn't like the point of it and that was something our dev kind of brought up to us um so you know it's still something that we're we're just going over everything to make sure that it's done right and it makes sense you know mm -hmm. yep yeah so we're, we're just making sure that if we do end up rolling out the cdad token as planned right now uh that it has a lot of utility behind it so what that utility looks like at the moment is obviously play to earn but whenever we hold like events uh crypto dad events in real life which we plan on doing uh we are in talks uh to rent out the bronco stadium possibly and actually hold oh, an yeah. event there <laughs> um and people could use you know the c dad tokens to to purchase things at the event but um but yeah we're we're still solidifying all that we're really just focusing on getting the game done right now um yeah. and getting that rolled out and then tackling the token after that uh kind of what josh men mentioned a minute ago is like our dev brought out brought up a lot of very good points with the coin so we're basically restructuring that entire what that looks like um at the moment so see but you know i think the way your economy ultimately would you say we just don't want to create like any sort of weird economy yeah because right now it's all healthy and respectful you know it, 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 things get weird when money gets involved i guess it, yeah from my experience you know, I think it's so important to hear how you guys frame almost every answer, mm -hmm. which is community first and utility. Yep. You know, and I think this is it's it's pretty evident, like watching how this has developed and watching the things on the roadmap that that's how you guys are thinking. And I think that's so important to pull out, you know, because whether you know someone listening to this decides to do an NFT project or launch a creator coin or anything else or just launch an online community. Those two fundamentals are always what works, 
no matter what the underlying technology is, is if you care about the people that are in your community and put them first and then think about utility and what are people actually going to get out of this, you will succeed. And it sounds real simple, but not a lot of projects do that or stick with it long term. And right. that, you know, again, that's just, that's been one of the things that has impressed me so much about what you guys are doing, but it's a, yeah, it's a lesson for, that's applicable no matter what project people are thinking of. Yeah, no, I mean, you're totally right. And the Gary V, you know, talks about this a lot is th the reason not a lot of people focus on those things is because there's too much focus on the financial gains and aspect of it all, which is something that I think the NFT community is actually going to keep moving away from, um, because it's not all about making money. It's not all about you know, profits on profits. It's literally about building a community because everything else just comes with that, right? So if you if you treat your community well, uh, you're you're a part of it yourself, um, and you're actually passionate about it. I mean, everything is going to be a complement of how passionate you are. So every action you take is going to benefit the community, and you know, financially, that will just come along in the future. Yeah. So there's something there's something else you guys did that I that I thought was really important and that I want to point out, which is the NFT tools course. Mm -hmm. And I think for anybody who's looking to build in Web 3.0, um, you know, especially with stuff like NFTs or creator coins that, again, the masses of people still aren't using and don't understand, there is such huge value in just providing education for people about how that works. I used it when it, to go look to see, okay, how am I going to mint one of these things? How am I going to do this during the public launch? And they were these short little lessons, but they were incredibly valuable. I assume that you guys got a huge return on the investment of the time that you spent creating that course. Yeah, for sure. So, I mean, our return, I guess, was just, yeah, people were taking the time to actually watch it. And, you know, first time buyers in the NFT space obviously knew how to purchase, you know, an, an, one of our NFTs now. Um, but yeah, I mean, we, we recorded that, we put it out completely for free. Um, I'm not real big on selling courses, uh, personally. So I, I, you know, I think education is one of the most important tools here and just getting that out there for everybody benefits literally the entire space. Um, and it helps people along the way too. So I, I, it's just something that I personally wanted to do and I know Josh did as well. Uh, mm -hmm. so we just, we took a weekend, recorded it and got it out. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I talk a lot about how like emotional people are in this space and it's not a bad thing at all. Um, a lot of it comes just because people, you know, feel like they're being lied to or misled. Mm -hmm. um, and it's understandable. The space is really confusing. You know, like, let's say, you know, you missed like a, a launch or something because like you thought some information was going to be this place. And then, you know, you're mad at the person that told you that, you know, it's just things get downhill really fast. And we really, really, really wanted to stay proactive and stay ahead of things so that we could avoid all the issues that we you know, honestly, we knew would have been a problem if we didn't do that. Right. Um, so it was, it was honestly just the best option and also just made so much sense for the type of project that we were doing at the moment. Well, and it's just, it's just indicative of what it takes for an online community to succeed, which is community leaders who are always thinking, what can I do to help my members? And then members who are always thinking, what can I do to help the community? And this is the other part of the crypto dads experience that has been really interesting is when you create something like you guys have, and I think you do that in part by being authentic, being helpful, you know, like you guys have done, you get a massive marketing army of people who are out there, you know, selling your project because they genuinely believe in it, you know, on Twitter or starting their own, you know, curated email newsletters for it. And like all these different things that just start to pop up where it's like, you know, these people are like working for you. They're not official in any capacity. You're not paying them in any capacity, but they're out there doing that, that work for you. What has it been like to, to, you know, to kind of be at the center of a community that has taken so much initiative to, to spread the good word about your project? Yeah. I mean, it, it's Crazy. been awesome. And that's like kind of the main thing about like what we are trying to say about NFTs. Right. Um, before I got into this project, I, you know, I, I own a board ape, for example. So I saw firsthand how that community was and you could literally be on Twitter and you can like see all the people I follow. I probably follow a thousand apes, right? Like that are, their profile pictures are apes. Their whole identity is being an ape, you know, and they're also at the same time, probably multimillionaire, like successful investors. <laughs> right. Um, so it's a whole community of people that also know that you're also probably a successful investor and probably know what you're talking about. So if you reach out to these people, they'll most likely read your message and respond, right? 
So that gave us a huge advantage, I think, at the beginning. Um, mm -hmm. And then at the same time, to answer your question more, like it, it, you know, that's like also why we wanted to focus on giving the individual um, intellectual property rights for the crypto dads to the actual owners, right? Because that can, if you want, become your identity, you own it. Um, so we love seeing that stuff. That's exactly what it's intended for. You know, people making their own derivative projects, people making like that guy that made his newsletter, like that's, that stuff is so awesome. <laughs> like, seriously, it's amazing. And it's happening so fast too. Yeah. And for me personally, just seeing it's actually pretty overwhelming. Um, and it makes us really, really, really think about how we give back because we want everything we do, you know, to make these people's time like worth it. Um, cause like, like you said, they're out there on Twitter, just constantly marketing for us. Like it, it's almost a job for them, you know? So <laughs> no, it, it just, it makes me personally, I'm, I'm just like always thinking like, what can I do for them? Like, what, what can I continue doing? Um, and I think that stems back to me and Josh, like just fully putting our hundred percent focus and time into this project. And, you know, any, we, we've had a lot of people ask us to like consult them and help them with their projects, but we just turn it down because we're our focus is here. Like we're not going anywhere. Like crypto dads is everything we're building is here for like years to come. So yeah. that's, it, it's crazy to see. And I imagine we're going to see the same people who are in the community now. Um, a lot of those same people with us two years from now. Oh yeah. So. No, it's, it, it's why look, I mean, I think we all know the importance of community and, and the benefits that you can get from building an engaged community. I mean, it just, mm -hmm. it is so valuable. But I also think if you're an investor or you you know or you're looking for okay what project should I get invested in being able to separate authentic genuine community from mirage communities mm -hmm. is going to be a superpower that pays huge dividends down the road because there are mirage communities like there's communities that they spring up they're really hot for one minute but then you know the it, it fizzles after some big event you know like a launch or whatever and it's not yeah. real and this is obviously not that okay I know that you guys have to go in a few minutes and it's so oh, you're totally fine. Okay, but you know, as someone who's very excited about the what you guys are about to go do, I do not want to. I do not want to impede your progress to that meeting. Um, but I do. I want to ask you one more question because we hear a lot about DAOs, and this is something yeah. that we've been talking a lot about too. And obviously, you have this engaged community. Have you thought about that? What do you think the future is for Crypto Dads in terms of how you structure it and how you continue to try to give the community ownership? You know, whether that's kind of figurative ownership. Um, or, you know, real ownership, like, or, or, or governance rights, like you would get in a DAO. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I think the best way for us to answer that right now is that we are still working on educating ourselves with DAOs. Um, yeah. you know, we don't obviously want to make any ultimate decisions. We love the concepts, right? That's the, that's the first answer, but, um, you know, we've, we've been talking to some people that are very established in DAOs. So, you know, we'd much rather hear from them, um, you know, hear opinions of what we should do, because like I said, we're not DAO experts. Um, all I know is that it sounds like a great thing that we should be doing for our community, but I, I would yeah. like to do it the correct way for sure. Yeah. And I, I chatted with some of our investors who have been helping us out a lot and they're really big on DAOs. Um, and they've just been pushing it for crypto dads over the past, like two weeks, uh, especially yeah. with the community wallet. They're like, why don't you set up the community wallet as a DAO? Because then everybody has to obviously approve of whatever we're putting the funds towards collectively. Um, and it's more secure that way. Like right now, it's just people trusting us, uh, which obviously we're going to not do anything crazy. But um, yeah, I mean, I, I think it's a lot better when everybody kind of has control and not just Josh and I. Um, I, I don't think that's really how things should be built in crypto because we want it all to be decentralized, right? That's the great part about this. Um, yeah. so yeah, I, I mean, moving into a DAO is a hundred percent something we're going to be doing. We're just learning how to structure that and working with people who are more educated than us on that topic. Mm -hmm. Seems smart. It's very easy to get shiny object syndrome in this industry yeah. and be like, oh yes, this is a great idea at this, but you do, <laughs> sure. you, you want to, especially with something like that, you know, I think yeah. you want to, you want to go into it kind of having your ducks in a row and not just, not just kind of <laughs> jump into it haphazardly. Yeah. Yeah, I imagine backpedaling out, out of a DAO is probably not the <laughs> easiest thing to do. So <laughs> Yeah. So last question before I get you guys out of here. Obviously, the next big kind of milestone, I think, is the minting of the crypto moms, which is supposed yeah. to happen in three or four or five weeks, something like that. Where essentially if you have a wallet with a dad in it, you will have the opportunity to mint a crypto mom. 
This is also something that my wife is very excited about to see <laughs> what kind of traits you guys have for the moms and all those and all those things. Uh, how is all how's all the planning for that? kind of kind of coming around can you share anything about about what's happening yeah. with that yeah for sure so i'm actually going to be posting some previews of the moms in there within like the next 48 hours uh mm-hmm. in our discord and on twitter uh the art's about probably about 70 percent done uh it should be wrapped up within the next week and then um our our dev is awesome so he's already pretty much already has the smart contract written out for the crypto moms nice. um so e- everything's moving extremely smooth uh we obviously learn like a ton from the crypto dads launch so it, it's it's going much more smooth this time around uh like dude there are so many problems when we were launching crypto dads <laughs> and the uh, yeah crypto moms is just going to be refreshing to to basically have everything just launch fairly smooth so yeah the art's almost done we're going to be posting previews um smart contracts good uh yeah literally everything is looking great so we should be rolling that out within the next like four weeks it makes total sense. You know, the yeah. dads are chaotic, not planned very well, you know, <laughs> and then the moms, everything's lined up and it's all very organized. That's that yeah. sounds about right. <laughs> well, the thing was, is like we thought we had the dads planned out extremely well. And then it, it's like 30 minutes before we launch. It's I don't know. Everything's just everything's going wrong <laughs> and you you have to stay cool. You can't like panic. So, um, yeah, we're I, I think we're actually doing everything right this time around. <laughs> but that's a lot of people are. I mean, kind of making it up as you go, you know, I mean, it's your first time doing it. You're learning things as you go. I don't, I didn't, I didn't see you sweat. Everything seemed like it went fine from my perspective. So, you know, that's a, no, it it, it went good. It's like with anything else, you're going to have problems arise and you just stay calm and figure out a solution to them and carry on. (laughs) So exactly. So what's the best way for, uh, for someone who's not involved, but who's interested in the project, even just kind of seeing it from the inside and how you guys are doing things. What's, how do you tell people the best way to get involved? Yeah. Josh. yeah I mean, um, Twitter, Discord. Our Discord is extremely active. So we have a, a chat called The Cave, which is basically like a general chat for anyone you don't have to hold or anything. You just have to join our Discord and accept the rules, which is just like pressing a button. Um, but that being said, yeah, I mean, like you could literally be anyone, join our community, be like, hey, guys, what's up? And someone's going to talk to you. Um, it's just how it is. You know, it's like a, it's just a huge, fun chat room. Everyone's having a good time. Uh, that's really the easiest way, you know, Twitter's kind of the same way. We really just try to grow like these communities on these different platforms. So like, you know, now when you're on Twitter, you'll see just like a bunch of dads replying to things, you know, and everyone's like, oh, they're yeah. the dads, you know, <laughs> but it, it's such a recognizable thing. Um, and it, that's what makes it also cool to be a part of the community, right? Is like, you you see all your other dad friends, you know, that are also doing stuff and you're like, oh, you know, those are my guys, you know? Yeah. Yep. So yeah, with that being said, I mean, people can go check us out at Crypto Dads NFT um, over on Twitter, Instagram, uh, our Discord, obviously. Um, if you click the link in our bio on our Twitter, it'll open up the link tree and people can literally see every, you know, our OpenSea links. Um, and yeah, I mean, they can also reach out to one of us on Twitter if they have questions. We're pretty res- responsive to people. Um, but yeah, I mean, a lot, a lot of ways to learn about crypto dads and you don't have to, you know, hold a crypto dad to be part of our community by any means. So. Absolutely. Well, Anthony, yep. Josh, this has been a thrill. I could keep you here and talk to you for hours about this project. <laughs> Same, <it's>, man. <laughs> it's so interesting to me, but I know you have meetings to get to. Thank you. Well, I'll obviously be following along. I hope, lo- you know, lots of people who are listening to this follow along too and wish you all the success fulfilling this roadmap because it's really exciting. Yeah. Thanks, thanks so much, man. man. We appreciate your time. Yeah. Thanks Absolutely. so much. Awesome. Cool. Take care, guys. Thank you. Yeah, you as well. Take care, man. Bye. Mm -hmm. All right. So that was Anthony and Josh from Crypto Dads. I know they had a meeting to get to, so needed to let them get going. You know, the last thing that I'll add to what they said there about getting involved is, you know, if, if you're interested in this stuff, you know, whether it's just to learn more about NFTs so you understand it and can explain it, or it's, you know, you want to learn, okay, how could I apply this to, you know, to what I'm doing? You know, the way that I tried to do it for a little while is kind of reading articles, trying to kind of understand it at an intellectual level, you know, but then it all started to make sense when I was just like, I just got to find a project to get involved with and like jump into. And so it doesn't necessarily need to be crypto dads. Like I said, the, the purpose of this is not to shill a project that I'm interested in or invested in. It's really, you know, find the one that you connect with. Because that's what's really important here. You know, like you can tell listening to them talk, 
you know, look, they're, they're obviously they're, they're making money from this project and there's a lot that it's, you know, a lot of doors it's opening for them. They're now forever the crypto dads project. And as long as this project goes well, that's going to help them for the next one. I think, you know, Josh said that, you know, in a sense. Um, and I think that's excellent, you know, big picture thinking, um, you know, uh, uh, from him, but you know, crypto dads may not be a project that you connect with, but find one that you do and get involved learn about it, see what happens on the community side, see what happens on their side, you know, as the founders and the people who were executing it. And what I think you'll find is you may not get some eureka moment for how you can do the next 10,000 mint project that gets big, but I bet it'll help show you right and wrong ways to develop a community and engage a community right and wrong ways to build utility with an NFT, which is so important, right and wrong ways to use gating and access that, because that's all the stuff that matters. And I think you really learn it and get a better understanding of it when you just dive in. And you know what? If you find a project that you really like, you're going to have opportunities to get invested more and more and help that project succeed. That to me is one of the most exciting parts about this web you know, 3.0 movement is you don't even necessarily have to have the perfect business model in your head or the you know the perfect direction to go in for the future. Just start going in a direction. I mean, look at these guys. They didn't realize that this project was going to be as big as it was, but it was kind of a, a topic, a, a general area, NFTs that they were excited about. They had an idea. It started to move, and they were passionate about the community and the project. They kind of found their passion within the project and doing the work. And that's what you see more and more in Web 3.0, and th- this emergence to it, is it's don't just sit on the sidelines and wait for the perfect opportunity. Go do stuff. Learn stuff. Start, get into a community, realize it's not for you, get out of it, get in, get out. And then you, eventually you find the one that you like and you get more invested. And maybe that even leads to the next project that you're going to start, right? That's what it's all about. So anyway, so much to to, to kind of talk about and digest here, but I really appreciate um, Anthony and Josh coming on. A lot to learn uh, from their project and from so many of the other projects that are out there. Um, so go do it. And let me know what you think. Send me a tweet at Jared Morris. Send me an email, jared at unemployable.com. Always enjoy hearing what you think about uh, these episodes and these interviews. And I'll see you all on Twitter or better yet, inside of the community. Talk soon. Thank you.